Growing up, one thing I was always around was the big estate sedans, things that my grandparents drove that really felt like they went on for miles and really kind of floated down the road. This week has kind of a nostalgic feel. Hey, welcome to this edition Road Warrior. I'm your host, Grant Robertson. Now behind me is the reincarnated 2017 Lincoln Continental. And what that does for the brand is, well, give itself a bigger flagship and, well, rekindle some old memories from this old guy. Thinking back of the good old days, riding around with my grandfather in these big estate vehicles, the good old Lincoln Town Car, the Grand Marquis, those were just big vehicles that felt well executive-esque and heck, it was just as good to ride at them as it was to drive. Now with the rebirth here with the Continental, they've gone back to that whole mindset. First starting on the outside. Now what you'll notice is it's, well, definitely huge. Some people confuse it with maybe a Bentley, something even more prestigious. And I like the fact that, well, it does take some people back and kind of wonder what it is. Now looking at the design, definitely artistic. First brush stroke, the designers nailed it. And where you see that is of course in the overall profile, a little bit of chiseling, a little bit of haunches, not too much flair, and it doesn't look too voluptuous, not like a big boat. What you also notice right along the eye line is the handles are blended right into the accent. Something a little unseen in today's vehicles. Most time, put a door handle, forget about it. What they did is raise it up just a hair and really blend it in to the overall look. Really makes it look nice and refined and takes it to the next level. Of course, the overall color, nice and subdued and really overall executive-esque and great sedan quality. So with the debut of the Continental, one thing Lincoln really had to focus on was of course the design, but really the overall size. They couldn't fall short here, especially with all the various competition in this market. Now what you're gonna see is about 201 inches overall, wheelbase just under 118, giving you plenty of stretch on this vehicle, and of course that ergonomics on the inside. Now when it comes to width, not shy here, definitely pushing about seven feet wide, which makes the tight spots, well, just feel a little bit tighter. But one thing that helps with that is the automatic tuck-in mirrors that really squeeze this vehicle in just a little bit and helps, well, lower the impact of any dings when you open the door. Lastly is height, falling just under five feet. Now what I also like is the shoes at the corner. You can either go with the standard 19 inch or the as seen 20 inch we have here. Sweeping down the side, one thing to talk about, always mentioned really is fill up area. Now what you're gonna notice on this vehicle when it is locked is, well, the fill up area isn't. This little hatch simply opens whenever you want. One security feature I always recommend and well, just fall short here. Now what I like with this vehicle is it has that concierge kind of feel. Now you can of course go with the black edition, the black label edition, which gives you a whole bunch of more frills and all that. But naturally, just from the start, this vehicle, when you approach, knows you're coming. First starts with the lighting. There's gonna be a little Lincoln emblem that adorns here on the floor, almost like a little mat to welcome you to the vehicle. There's some nice low intensity lighting that really illuminates all the way around from the rear taillights, the headlights, really lets you know that, hey, you're approaching the vehicle and it welcomes you. Even better, the interior dims just a little bit to kind of just seem so more inviting. If you look back on the good old days with the good old Grand Marquis and the old Lincoln Town Car, one thing they always wanted to do is set off the front end, basically so everyone knew what you were driving. Now back then, the good old emblems were blazing right here on the hood. Well, they subdued that just a little bit, putting it right there on the grill. Now what you also notice is, well, a nostalgic feel when it comes to chrome. Plenty of that right up front, especially right through the grill. Nice, bright, and polished with a little bit of contrast with the body color all the way around. Now, in the good old days, big pronounced bumpers really set off the front end. Here, well, a little bit more subdued and tucked into the body. Lower fascias really setting off the front end and some lower chrome to match. Now, when it comes to headlights, again, in the good old days, big, square, boxy, really pronouncing that you're coming down the road. Here, they went with more of a five lens-like approach. Now, one thing I didn't appreciate was, well, they're not dynamic. As you sweep into the cur curve, I would assume maybe it would rake across, really allowing you to get a little bit more illumination. Not the case. Instead, there is kind of a side lamp here that as you turn, it does illuminate, but I prefer in curves that these were a little bit more dynamic. Now you also see down low some more lighting and even better to accentuate the headlights, there is kind of a rope lighting down below. The Lincoln Continental comes with three power plant options, the basic of which is the 3.7 liter V6. Now it's gonna deliver about 305 horses 
and 280 foot pounds of torque. Now, if you demand a little bit more pep in your step, there are two twin turbo options, a 2.7 liter or a 3.0 liter V6s. Now, the lower the two delivers around about 335 horses and 380 foot pounds of torque, while the more spirited 3.0 produces 400 horses and 400 foot pounds. Now, if you want to look at fuel economy, there's not much difference with really only the front wheel drive creeping out the all wheel drive on all particular engines. For the basic V6 and the 2.7 liter twin turbo, they come in either front wheel drive or all wheel drive options while the bigger engine is only available in all-wheel drive. Now, Lincoln Drive Control provides the driver a choice of three settings, basically comfort, normal, and sport. Adapting steering and suspension setups to tailor ride and handling. Now, continuous control damping helps isolate continentals from road imperfections, while adaptive steering technology improves steering efficiency and effort. This vehicle has tons of technology and the best part is it starts right here at the door. Now you definitely have a key fob and one thing to note is this quite hefty and big. Wouldn't hurt to slim this down just a little bit, but it has all the various operations. Of course, locking, unlocking the vehicle and remote start and of course popping that trunk for ease of access. Now, what I like here at the door is it really is intuitive getting in this vehicle. Simply put your hand here. There is a small little trigger. Just simply press it and it opens right up. Even better is it has door cinching technology. And basically what that means is once you get it close, it closes the rest of the way. Now, obviously keep small fingers out of the way, but pretty much the touch of elegance you expect on a vehicle like this. Swinging around to the back end, the business side of any vehicle, and what I like is it truly delivers when it comes to hauling people and all of their gear. Now, one thing to talk about really is the operation back here, the technology. Now, definitely hands-free. You can go with the good old remote. There is a button here you can press, but even better, simply swivel your leg back here just a little bit, and it's gonna rise to the occasion. Now, this power approach to the trunk could be overkill, but it's definitely something to expect with a vehicle that has this much elegance. It's gotta take it even here to the next level. Now, while this is open, what you're gonna find is about 16.7 cubic feet of space. Definitely taking it to the utmost when it comes to size and really delivering all the expectations for cargo volume. In case you need it, just to take a note, under the cargo floor is a little bit of old school invention called a full size spare, but it is there if you need it. When you climb inside the Continental, this is where really the inside definitely matches the outside when it comes to overall feel, size, and scope of this vehicle. Of course, you wouldn't expect it to be tight, and well, it definitely isn't. Now, one number that truly shines is the legroom numbers. Up front, around about 44 inches, the back seat around about 41. Now, what does that mean? Well, pretty much any NBA All-Stars definitely gonna find comfort. Even more so, as these front seats naturally move forward because, well, it's just too much room, the back seat's actually gonna win out when it comes to legroom battle. Now, looking at the front seats, one thing to talk about really is the moving parts that go along with the seat, and they're really kind of one of a kind. Really been patterned off executive jets. Now, it starts right here at the top. Now, what you'll be able to tell is the headrest alone can actually move backward and forward, and really allows the comfort to match the seating position that's required by the person. Now, as you move down here, you'll also see that the seat back itself can actually articulate. Now, people have different kind of seating arrangements and what they prefer, so this upper portion can actually move forward just a little bit more because maybe it's just a little bit more comfortable to have a little bit more articulation. Now as you swing down you're going to see a lot of kind of support through here but it's not real tight. Even more so right up here in the front this is kind of a split thigh design and what that basically means is you can kind of lower extend on each independent side because some people may want to maybe stretch out one leg versus the other and this really comes into play for the driver as they're driving their left leg can actually be lowered just a little bit to have a little bit more relaxation while this one's more kind of alert position. Now looking for entertainment and basically control this vehicle starts with the touchscreen system front and center known as the SYNC 3. Now it basically houses everything you possibly need when it comes to function. Starts with this quadrant screen which I truly like. Now I've tested other Fords that had more of a cumbersome approach. This may be the more fine-tuned version. Now down here it's a little shortcuts. Basically everything you're going to want 
at your fingertips and I like the fact that you can simply navigate even right down to climate. Now climate is basically duplicated because you do have these controls down below. I must admit this is actually a little bit more simple but also you of course have navigation. Now looking at everything else around here this is your gear shifters. No, no traditional gear shifter knob on the steering column or even in between the front seats. The good old push button and one thing to note is the good old sport mode. Now that's really going to give you the rocket ability of this vehicle. Now if you get lost in all this simply press the home button that's going to take you back here. Now over here on the far right you do have parking sensors which you can turn on or off and you do have parking assist which basically allows with parallel parking and perpendicular parking basically in those tight spots simply hit that. All it's going to ask you to do is control um, the brake and the gas and of course you do have cameras 360 view basically around the vehicle that bird's eye that really lets you look around and of course the backup camera basically allows you to look behind you and even a front mounted so you can really get in tight and know what's in front of you. Now for the climate control and some other functions you'll find that just below the screen. This may take a little bit of getting used to. First thing to note is the symmetric knobs for volume. This one being a little bit of a stretch away from the driver it really helps you dial in your specific uh, radio station that you're looking for and of course some shortcuts but most of the time you can just refer to the screen up above. Now down here is your various climate controls. First note is the oversized fan speed which is right here. Now I must admit I've been used to some other vehicles that use this as a gear shifter this size knob so when I got the learning curve going on I actually try to shift gears with this now your mode selects are actually the most easy part basically find those right through the middle the temperature a little bit more cumbersome what I typically want to do is press these triangles right here to change the actual temperature when it's actually more of a toggle switch that really takes a little bit of getting used to also have a heated and cooled seats which really kind of dress this up with some more illumination now you will find smaller buttons as well one thing to note is the heating steering wheel is right here prefer that to be actually on the steering wheel or someone else somewhere else what you also see is the uh, front defrost here now it took me a minute but it seems natural now but the rear defrost is here that again just takes some searching to find but basically everything's housed right here and again if you get cumbersome with this just simply refer to the screen as you sweep down you will find this hidden compartment right here and once you open it up you will find uh, dual USBs here as well as a power supply and pretty much a nice place to house and store your electronics either to hide them or even charge them the overall design inside this vehicle really has kind of a leather-esque saddle look to it, westernish maybe, but you'll see that in the brown tones and even in this brown kind of uh, heavy wood grain. Now, some people say this is a little more antiquated. I think it looks nice and regal and kind of a throwback Thursday kind of approach. Other designs, you definitely can scale this down depending on what your appointments are. Now what you'll see here underneath this are dual cup holders, nice and snug options when it comes to these grips here on the side and a little place again for your phone or whatever all built right between the front occupants. The gauge cluster is definitely new school thinking with a digital readout when it comes to your speed. Not really anything for tachometer and well they could have dressed it up just a little bit more here when it comes to all the various options. Now to control that you can simply do it right here on the steering wheel. Now again some more learning curves when it comes to figuring out how to change things. Now simply press the display is going to give you tons of options and you basically can cycle through them using the uh, controls on the steering wheel. Now you can opt for the standard speedometer that has more of the needle but then you lose out on the digital readout when it comes to the numericals for the speed. To change any seating position, you're going to find the controls high up on the doors, not positioned low on the seats. And that, again, just requires you to kind of change your thinking if you're used to one way or the other. Now, there are multiple memory settings. And again, all the various articulations will be found basically as it relates to the seat. Want to move the seat bottom? Pull that one. Seat back right there. All of it's nice and understanding. Now down here this is for the seat cushion where your thighs are. This allows you really to control those independently. This giving you some extra support when you need it. Looking at the back seat this is where if you want to be driven you're going to find your home and after all depending on the size individual in the front again a lot of leg room. 
and there is some great comfort back here. Now, the first starts with a standard bench styling back here. There is a little bit of sculpting on both sides, and that is because of basically articulation when it comes to the seat backs themselves. They're going to be independent, and you'll even notice kind of really emphasis here on the headrest almost being pillow-like. Now, for the controls on that, you will again find back here a little bit more simplified with really just the seat back itself finding its position now unlike some other cars this is not going to articulate at all it's really just this seating position now one thing to also note is really getting out of the vehicle what you're going to find in every position is a button here by the handle now it's a little bit lower than you expect but simply press that electronic re releases the door and you get outside real easy now there are emergency pull handles should there be a power failure that really can override that if you need now, once you get in the back seat, one thing you'll notice is that bench styling I mentioned really just feels like you're kind of waiting to get in the game coach put me in. With the seat back like this and the reclinability, that does add a little bit to the overall feel. Now, one thing you also notice, I'm over six feet tall and the headroom is somewhat encroaching. They did actually put a little bit of a niche here above both rear occupants, so it gives you a little bit of breathing room, but that's really only if you're kind of in a reclining kind of feel. Now, there is no up and down to these bench styling, so pretty much there is a little bit of tightness back here overall. Now, some other things to think about really is over here. Now, what you'll notice is these actual back seats are massaging. There's a button right here. Once you press it, you're gonna feel kind of some soothing massaging going on. Just a get another touch of elegance. What you also see is the sunscreens. Now I call them limo screens because it really kind of helps privatize the back end back here. You have one at the back and one here on the side. Allows you to lower and raise it and kind of give you your privacy. Now one of the best features back here really is the independence the back seat drivers are gonna have. And it starts right here with the center console, kind of a command post for the back seat drivers. And really it's all independent from that in the front and it starts really with the climate control all these are independent really control the vents right in front of you fan speed temperature the different modes of course you have heated and cooled seats plus the massaging i mentioned this um, as well does the uh, sun uh, shade above you and the rear shade again giving you that overall feel that you're in control right back here and of course it doesn't hurt you have your own entertainment now the ready control really will be for the entire car so when you control it you're basically affecting the entire car it's not really individualized now what is of course is the massaging and what you'll notice is when you press the button there on the door it gives you various settings to change independently where the massage is more intense and you can do that both uh, for back passengers now it does it for this edition of Road Warrior Test Drive Behind the Wheel of the 2017 Lincoln Continental. Really bringing back that estate feel I remember from decades ago. And well, feeling like I want to be driven, not necessarily just being the driver. Now what we love is of course various power plants, decent fuel economy, but plenty of room on the inside to match this massive exterior. Now as always, like thank you for watching this edition of Road Warrior. Keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead.